What is going on guys? Welcome back to the C++ tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about exception handling. So let us get right into it. So let's talk about the basic idea behind exception handling. Now, let's say you have some piece of code here and this piece of code uh, is prone to errors. You can get some errors or exceptions here. Something can happen that you don't want to happen, but you cannot necessarily say, okay, uh, you cannot prevent it with ifs because whenever you can prevent something with ifs, you want to prevent it with ifs, but sometimes things happen during runtime that you cannot prevent with ifs, or it's hard to prevent them with ifs, or you don't want to do it. Um, so in those cases, what you want to do is you want you just want to run the code. And in case something goes wrong, you want to do something. Now in Python, for those of you who come from a Python background, we have the try except, oh, sorry, try except structure. So we have a block where we try something. And then in case it goes wrong, we execute the except block. Uh, for those of you who come from a C background and you don't know any other programming languages, which I don't think that anyone out there knows C and no other language, but nevertheless, if you come from a C background, you know that there are error codes. You don't know what try catches and you don't deal with exceptions because in C, what we do is we have some piece of code, for example, I don't know, printing something, whatever. And we're actually printing something is probably the dumbest example that I could have come up with. But let's say we have something like opening a semaphore or closing a semaphore, whatever happens, it can return an error code. So uh, let's say we try something STH for something. And if this something returns the error code negative one, we go in here and we do F print F, you don't need to learn this, this is just C. Uh, and you have some error message that you send to SD error and so on, blah, 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 whatever. And then you go exit, exit failure like that. That is the C way of doing things. In C++, we don't do it like that. We can still do it like that, but you don't have to do it like that. Uh, because in C++, we throw exceptions and we catch those exceptions. So imagine we have a function up here called divide. It takes two floats, float one and float two. And the basic idea here is if f2 equals zero, because division by zero is undefined. Now C++ lets you do that. Let me just show you that it does. Um, if I go ahead and say C out 10 divided by zero, this will not give me any errors. Uh, what happened here? Doesn't give me errors, but it doesn't give me an output either. I think if we do it like that, float F1, float F2, C in F1, C in F2. And then we do F1 divided by F2. And I now input seven and zero, we get infinite or infinity as a result, which mathematically speaking is not correct because the division by zero is undefined. So this should not be infinity necessarily, unless you define it to be infinity, right? But uh, let's say we want to create a function that does not allow a division by zero. What we could do is we could say, okay, if the second uh, parameter here, if the second number is zero, throw an exception. So we use throw the keyword throw, and then we can specify an error code here. So let's say we specify 15 for whatever reason. And uh, now what we can do here is we can say, we're not going to use the division here, we're going to use uh, the divide function, we're going to pass f1 and f2. Uh, we of course need to say what happens else. Otherwise, we're going to return uh, f1 divided by f2. And if we now run this, I can go ahead and say seven divided by four, and we get 1.75. And I can say eight divided by two, and we get four. And now I can try to say nine divided by zero. And you can see terminate called after throwing an instance of int. So we got an exception here. So we can do it that way, we can either write our own functions that throw exceptions. But even if you don't want to do that, there are libraries out there that just throw exceptions when something goes wrong. So for example, when you try to open a file that doesn't exist, when you try to, to do stuff that you should not be doing, or when stuff happens that should not be happening. Um, and what we can do instead of letting the program just crash, because now, you, you know, whenever you get an exception, the program crashes. And if you don't want this to happen, you can use a try catch structure. So you say try, try this piece of code. And if something goes wrong, if we get an exception, 
catch this exception. Um, and in here, we just have to specify uh, what kind of exception it is, int e in this case. And then we're just going to say c error, which is like c out. So if you don't use std, uh, you should be writing std c error. Don't forget that, best practice. And then we say uh, error, for example. Like that. So now if I try to divide by zero, we get error. Now, of course, in this case, the program also terminates. But if we had some code down here, like uh, C out test, or something like that, it would still run that piece of code. And we would get this if we wouldn't catch this. So if we remove the try catch structure here, we would not see the last line of code. So if I say seven divided by zero, it terminates immediately when the exception is thrown. So with try catch, we can catch the exception, uh, which essentially means that we have taken care of it and we can proceed with the rest of the code. Now, if you wanna um, distinguish the individual error codes, you can go ahead and say if E equals 15, for example, we can say C out division, by zero is undefined and otherwise we can just print a general error message like that. So in this case, if we have something like six divided by zero, we would get division zero is undefined. If we got some kind of other exception here, we could also, uh, or we would still print error, a generic error message. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.